Oh. oh, sorry. Okay, go ahead. I am Tony Glover. I'm from the University of Florida, and my poster is hydroxy vitamin D levels below 25 nanograms per milliliter are associated with increased osteoarthritis symptoms in a sample with chronic knee pain. So this is a cross-sectional study. I'm part of a larger group at the University of Florida, Dr. Roger Philogen's lab, and we also have a sister site at the University of Alabama at Birmingham with Dr. Larry Bradley. And we're looking, the larger study looks at ethnic differences in osteoarthritis symptoms. My interest, I am a PhD student in nursing, um, is I am looking at vitamin D levels and chronic pain. So in our study we had 105, 100, I'm sorry, 155 people, uh, community dwelling folks with knee pain that we recruited to our, la uh, our laboratory. Um, 73% of the sample is female, which you would expect with osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis affects 27 million Americans, and with the aging of the population, we expect that number to increase. Uh, our sample was pretty evenly divided between African American and Black and White, so 48% African American and Black, 52% White. Upon radiographic examination of the knee, 67% to moderate or, or mild to severe uh, osteoarthritis. And even though both our sites are in the south, 73% of our sample had insufficient levels of vitamin D or vitamin D levels below 30. Um, and my interest is looking at the relationship between vitamin D level and chronic pain. Uh, our sample is a little younger at this point because we just started two years ago and uh, we were kind of taking anyone, but our, our age goes from 45 to 85 and now we're trying to recruit older folks. So our age, uh, average age is 57.1. In osteoarthritis, we know that um, obesity worsens pain. Our sample is uh, on the obese side. And then we looked at clinical measures of pain. The WOMAC is a very standard and common uh, questionnaire used to assess knee pain, and it assess, assesses not only knee pain, but stiffness and physical dysfunction over the last 48 hours. And then we also looked at the short performance physical battery, which is a, a measurement of lower extremity function, so people do balance tests where they stand and balance on, on their feet in, in certain positions. They get up and down from a chair, um, and then they walk a four-meter walking course, and we time them. So in, the results were, in this study, when we looked at vitamin D level and the Womax scores, if your vitamin D level was below 25, your Womax score was likely to be higher, which meant that you would have more pain, stiffness, and dysfunction, or the OA phenotype. Similarly, if your BMI is above 30, your Womax score is likely to be higher. So there was an independent main effect, but not an interaction effect. And those were significant. And then with the SPPB, the short performance physical battery, um, there was not a main effect, but there was an interaction effect. So thus, if your vitamin D level is below 25 and your BMI is above 30, then you're likely to have worse function on the, the performance of those activities, balance and walking and chair tests. And we know how hard it is for, for folks to um, lose weight. Uh, so the idea behind this poster is that for those with a high BMI and low vitamin D, you might be able to improve their vitamin D status and mitigate their pain so that they could be more active and, and have better function. Um, of course, this is a cross-sectional study, so we need more intervention studies to test that. And, um, and I hope to do that as a, as after I get my PhD.